jumping off a bridge, getting a vivid glimpse into the Edo period, learning all things railway related. Ah, I just can't get enough of Kanto. So far, it has already been a ride brimming with energy and edification around this region. But now, I'm ready to focus entirely on its most notable area, Tokyo. Let's go! Starting my day early, I'm about to tick off a long-born desire where Japanese traditions are concerned. Extremely excited. That is Sakai Gawabeya, which is a Rikishi stable or a sumo stable if you're more likely familiar with that term. Now, it looks like a normal building from the outside, but if you look closer, there's some very large guys stretching all covered in sand because this is where they train. Now, inside, I've got my buddy Ralph, which you haven't met yet, so I'll introduce you a little bit later, but he's going to keep me in check, I suppose, because there's a lot of traditions and rituals involved because it used to be used as a Shinto religion practice. Sumo is among Japan's most sacred exports, and even its training process requires a strict observation by viewers such as myself. Luckily, I've got Ralph to cue me in on what's what. Law graduate Ralph knows more than a thing or two about many sports, including sumo. Rules within the sport itself are simple enough. A rikishi who steps out of the ring or touches the ground with any body part other than the soles of his feet loses. That said, there are restrictions when you watch the wrestlers practice at the Bayer, such as keeping as silent as possible throughout the two to three hour session. The sumo Bayer is not just where the rikishi train, they cook eat, sleep, basically live here, all striving to become the Yokozuna. One such rikishi is Goedo-san, who currently holds the title of Ozeki, the second highest ranking in sumo hierarchy. So every day, same like today. So this ne. Ato wa shu ni ni kai gurai wa betsu de. Sumo bedo betsu de. Kozin tekin jimu itte kore ni guishi mas. So what would be a typical training routine for a person like Oedo-san? Eh, daite hitte de sugi ni okite, daite hatte ji masugi ni keiko ba oridegu desu kedo. What really makes good sumo wrestling? やっぱりメインカズナも this, by far, has been one of my most fulfilling experiences since starting this trip. A dream come true, if you may. Fully refreshed, I'm ready for another early day, kicking off with a trip to Skiji Station. Now, wet markets are one of those things that you have to tick off the list whenever you go to a new country. And this place in particular, Skiji Market, is one of the best in the world. And there's reasons for that. They have the freshest fish, the best produce, and it's not only bought here in Japan, it's bought here and then shipped all across the globe. So places like America or London, they receive the fish from this market in particular. Tsukiji is the grounds of one of the world's largest fish markets, and it's said to be the trade center of an estimated 2,000 tons of marine products on a daily basis. Now this is something we're all familiar with, wasabi. This is how you really prepare. You've got to take off the, uh, the top there and then grate it on a little grater here. But if you taste it now, it's almost sweet. What they do is they add a little bit more sugar and they leave it for about half an hour and that's the wasabi that you know. Nearby this stall catering fresh wasabi, I spy with my little eye another staple in Japanese cuisine. And if you've ever wondered what those really delicious little brown flakes are on some of your Japanese delicacies, it's actually bonito flakes. Now this is a flank from a bonito fish and of course this is dried, it's cured out in the sun and it can take within probably about six months to a year to get it to this sort of grade. Sensei, do you think you could show me how to flake? Yeah, okay. Oh, great. Come then. The process of grating bonito into katsuobushi is pretty straightforward, most reliant on how finely shaved you want the flakes to be. Mmm, so light, so fluffy, very flavorsome, delicious. 
Tsukiji's inner market is where wholesale activities and famous tuna auctions are held. I don't get to partake in the auction, but I do find a restaurant where its chef offers me an up-close look at cutting the maguro. Wow, look at this. Master swordsman here. That looks extremely sharp. How much does this tuna weigh? 42. Now, there's an exact science to this, and this is only taught through years and years of learning how to cut up a fish like this. There's a delicate way of slicing to make sure it's very exact, because each part is actually different from the toro, which is the belly fat. It's very expensive, you would say, because there's a very fine texture, it's very fatty, and a lot of people love it. And so the price of it is a lot more than, say, the back area. Filleting tuna is no easy feat, as it takes years of experience to maneuver that maguro knife over the whole fish. And the name of this? Nakaochi. What he's got me doing is skimming this little bit of flesh in between the ribs and it comes off in these perfect slithers which looks so appetizing. Feeling I might fare better with a smaller chunk of maguro with a shorter blade, I try my hand at slicing the tuna and making a maguro nigiri. As it turns out... Okay. Oh my god, this is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Enjoy your meal. Whoa. Oh, is he? Yeah! <laughs> that wraps up my sushi wrapping efforts. I think I'll stick to appreciating sushi and fresh maguro the best way I know with my obliging palate. When it comes to fashion, it's the Harajuku movement that represents Japan on a global scale. Showing me around this world of all apparels bright and distinctive is Kaori, whom you may remember from my photo booth exploits. Quirky Kaori is a stand-up comedian who can bust some epic moves when a sick beat comes on. Hi. Hey. <laughs> How, are How are you? You, you alright? Good to see you. So this is the place? Yeah, let's go! Wow! Oh, oh my, my goodness! So what type of style is this actually? The style called Harajuku and uh, Kawaii. Oh! You look kawaii! So instantly I've become kawaii. If I wear these. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Who are the clients who come here? Like young girls, guys? Yeah. Do guys wear this sort of stuff? They have men's clothes too. They do have men's clothes. Yeah. yeah. This is guys' stuff? This looks like something a 13 year old would wear to bed. <laughs> 6% <laughs> Doki Doki is the creative masterpiece by artist Masuda Sebastian, who aimed at spreading the Japanese kawaii culture to the rest of the world. She looks amazing. Yeah. She almost looks like she's from the future. So, can you ask it, does she go out like this every day? How long it takes her to get ready in the morning? Just one hour! I've got like the boringest hair compared to you. guys look like My Little Ponies in comparison yeah. to me. <laughs> All this fluorescence has been fascinating, but it's time for me and Kaori to head out and see what else these streets of Harajuku have to offer. With nothing solid in my plans for the day, I head to the hub of all hubs to see where today's win takes me. I've got with me a Suica, a prepaid card in lieu of a ticket from the vending machine. Not only can I board JR East trains with it, I can use the Suica on buses and subways and even drinks and newspapers. Talk about convenience. Amongst the world's central train station, Shinjuku here is probably one of the more popular and most famous and it epitomizes the hustle and bustle of Japan and all of its urban population because Shinjuku is the epicenter of the train routes here in the city. I can virtually head anywhere from here and I know just where to go. Look at that! That is huge! This is Musashi, or more commonly known as the Sky Tree, which is located in the wonderful city of Tokyo. It is the largest broadcasting tower in the world, and it stands at a whopping 634 meters. I guess there's nothing else to do than go up and take a look. With a large shopping complex at its base, Tokyo Sky Tree was opened in 2012, making it Japan's tallest structure and the tallest self-supporting tower in the world. 
Let me get up to these really tall buildings. You sort of have that stark realization of how tall it physically is. I mean, we're only at 350 meters, so it kind of puts everything in perspective. Everything's so tiny. You can kind of see the Tokyo Tower in the distance there. And I always thought that was really big, but we are towering over it. Stunning. It really goes into play the, the planning of Tokyo City. It's all very, oh, I suppose, correct. Everything kind of works. The river meanders through the kind of central business district over there near the ports. Appreciate Tokyo a lot more from up here. On the Tembo deck at the 350th floor, I obsess over the touch-based Tokyo space-time navigation system that displays brilliant panoramas of Tokyo's landscape with useful information on locations. Is that nifty or what? Uh, 1,030 yen, you can actually escape some of those crowds and go up to Tembo Galleria. Now, it's a different view. This platform here is 445 meters, but actually slopes upwards. So you gain another five meters, which means I should end up at about 450 meters. Now, this is a different view altogether because I've kind of got this air walk sort of feel to it where you can look down all the way to the street level. It's a little bit more kind of skylighted, actually. I can actually see where I need to be next. Tokyo Dome, uh, just shining, that brilliant white roof. I don't want to be late, so uh, better get down to earth. It's nice up here, though, isn't it? Japan's most popular sport is baseball, and this is the ultimate place to watch the game in all its glory, the Tokyo Dome. I'm catching a big game here with Ralph later on, but first, I'm going to kill some time with Kauri at the Dome's other attractions. Okie dokes, this is it, nice. So Ralph's going to be bringing me to the big Giants game later on, but Kauri and I thought we'd see what else is on offer around Tokyo Dome. Alright, let's go straight to the batting cage, so I can see how good you're at it. And I think maybe we can have a little wager on who's better. Oh, as in the competition. You're right. As in the winner has the bragging rights for the rest of the trip, mm -hmm. and the loser has to do something very yeah, horrible. Yeah, exactly. I like those odds. There are loads of things to do here at the Tokyo Dome, and our choice of competition is the hyper-realistic batting cage. Three speeds for the mechanized pitches. Of course, we agree on the lowest since we're amateurs. You gonna go first? Yeah. All right, take this, take this, take this. Let me get the helmet, let me get the helmet. All right, Carrie, it's on like Donkey Kong. Diet, miss. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. All right, my turn, my turn. Yes, I'm a champion. I did miss quite a lot, actually, oh, didn't I? You're a bad dude! How did you beat me like that? Really? Were you playing with these buttons? No, really? Really? Oh, really? I did just know oh. that! Alright, fair and square, you won. I know Good that. Job. Hmm, I guess Carrie can always take up baseball if she's bored of stand-up comedy. Can't believe I lost the bet, but... Ah, uh, gosh. It's time for the real deal. Tokyo Yomiuri Giants versus Yokohama DNA Bay Star. In Japan, as a culture, why are they so passionate about sport like this? It is said that after the World War II, people were kind of depressed and you know under pressure. That this baseball did give them big hope yeah. and big courage in order to, you know rise up again. So it's quite an integral part of getting everybody back right. together, that like camaraderie. Otherwise, you won't get like 55,000 every day. It's okay, give me a brief outline. Right. I'm familiar with a few sports. Sure. Some of the, the bat and ball games, right. they're very complex. Right. Simple as A team, B team. Each have nine players on the field. Right. As you can see, one pitcher and one catcher. Infield people, yeah. they're one, two, three, four. Very close one here is called the first stop. That's why he's a first First. Then there's next one at the second, right. and then third base, and then you go this home base. And the pointing system, right. which is 
super difficult to understand, right. I think. As you can see on the scoreboard, you see the watch. Okay, yeah. And yep, there's yep. B, S, O, right? right? Ah, and yes. B is called a ball. Ball means it's outside, no good. Okay, okay. S is a good ball. Right. And out is the out counting. Uh, as soon as they hit, they're gonna run as fast as they can to the first base. There we go. And, you see that? and the center field catches. Now the light's gonna be on one out as out. Because it wasn't out. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> and so okay, we're sat watching right. the Giants obviously play, but I need some like cat calls or some right, songs. Right, right, right. Other, do, you, do you know anything now, that I can say? Okay, one thing we can say if the giant hit a home run, then it's time for this orange towel. Uh -huh. You see the whole stadium people, sportish fans. Just what a like they shout. Just oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning. So okay. this is it. Oh, oh. It's a hit! Oh wow, so this guy's a back and this is one point! Yay. 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 Giants! 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 Giants. Okay, now it's time for us, uh, dinner because it's between the inning. Yeah. So it's time for us. Oh, okay. So this is the moment where everybody tucks into their little right. bento boxes, grabs their drinks, and then enjoys. So uh, we'll be back with you in a bit. <laughs> Having a bento box at a baseball game doesn't get more Japanese than this. Totally beats corn dogs and chips, if you ask me. Well, cheers for taking me to the game, mate. Thanks well, for the crash course and the rules, of big course. Big pleasure. Big pleasure, thank yes, you so much. But I've heard something that early at the batting cage, what happened oh, there? Oh, man, can we talk about that? <laughs> ah, so what's the punishment? Because I know there is one. Oh, well, keep the punishment. You know, it's a huge challenge, right? Challenge? Ah, oh, you guys. So, Ralph's pick of a challenge is interesting to say the least. It's an evening at the robot restaurant in Shinjuku, which serves up a feast not just for the stomach, but for all the senses. I just watched. I have no idea how to explain this, but I think coming with up with a metaphor is, is is a challenge in itself. I think I've been stranded in a desert island for about a week, been slapped repeatedly in the face by a Christmas tree for the past half hour, and that just comes to the tip of the iceberg of what to experience here. But I think I reckon I could squeeze one more show in. After my wild evening at the robot restaurant last night, Carrie is asking for reviews, so I'm getting on the train to meet her for a mellow breakfast in the city. Hi Carrie, where are we? <laughs> I brought you here to Ikebukuro. This is Ikebukuro, right. Yeah, okay. and I hear you love cats a lot. Oh, <laughs> please tell me you're going to take me where I think you're going to take me. Yeah, Neko Cafe Cat Cafe! Yes. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Before entering this Neko Cafe, we're asked to disinfect our hands with sanitizer so we don't harm the cats with our germs. But after that, we're free to play with the cute kitties with the abundant toys available. I've actually I've noticed mm -hmm. that in Japan, mm -hmm. there aren't many stray cats. Do the Japanese themselves mm -hmm. have many pets that they love? Yeah, they do. But many apartments have restrictions oh, not to have okay. a cat, so that's why not so many people can have. And so, how does it work? You come, mm -hmm. you buy a coffee, mm -hmm. and then is there a premium price? No, it's a free drink, so if you pay the entrance fee. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, you can. So there's an entrance fee? Yeah. So a lot of the cats here, mm -hmm. are they shelter cats or are they sort of pedigree cats? They are not shelter cats, some of them are saved. I am totally vibing on the stress release that comes from being in this cafe. Ah, after playing with the cats for a bit more, Carrie and I leave for a different kind of therapy. Woo 
Welcome to Akihabara! Now this place is super famous for being very loud, extremely colorful, and lots of fun. And otaku's a mecca! That's right. There's plenty of geeks around here because the anime, the computers, yeah. the cameras, the electronics. Harry, the Harry, Harry, there's so much to see. So if we start now, I think we can get up by 3 o'clock. Done by 3 o'clock? But yep. it's, it's 2 o'clock now. In the morning! In the morning! Let's, Let's go! go! <laughs> this way. <laughs> oh. oh. What? Pokemon! Oh my goodness. You oh. like Pokemon? Oh. oh, Charizard. Blastoise. We oh. got you also known as the Holy Land for geeks or otaku, Akihabara is a mecca of technological gadgets galore. I got a question. What? I've seen mm -hmm. these everywhere. All the Japanese have mm -hmm. these phones, oh, but it, it looks just so simple, so old. Anything special? Not so old, but uh, we call them Gala K. This is the yeah very basic phone, though. Okay. Yeah, it is easier for us to put the language and cheaper to make a call. What is this? It's the exercise machine for months. Four, four, oh, yeah. Harder, 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 harder. An hour of shopping soon turns into three, and before Carrie and I know it, evening has fallen. Something fit for an emperor, mm -hmm. and we are on a Yakata Bune yep. on the Tokyo Bay. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful tonight. Wow, it's my treat. I hope you enjoy. I will. I really want to show you how beautiful Tokyo is. No, especially at night. We've got the what? Rainbow Bridge over yeah, there. Yeah, Rainbow Bridge. That Odaiba. Odaiba. Oh, and Ooh. behind us, Tokyo Tower. Yeah. But it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so cold. cold. So we go inside? Yeah. We'll go inside. Right, let's go. Wow. 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 That's what we're inside. Yeah, they're amazing. Oh, delicious. Really Look at this. Eat. It seems so delicious. Uh, anyway, oh, uh, did you fall in love with Tokyo so far? Uh, I gotta say, Tokyo has once again astounded me. This is—I've mm -hmm. been—I've had such a good trip. We went to see the Giants play, yeah. which was my first yeah. ever it baseball so cool. game. Oh, really? I had a fantastic views on in, on the sky tree. But I think the the definite kind of standout thing that I experienced was mm -hmm. the, the sumo. Sumo. Yeah, oh, yeah, we went to the behind the scenes of the sumo stables, saw them training. Oh, ah, it was a dream come true. A wonderful dinner of fresh and succulent sashimi, rounds of song mutilations over the K-Box, all aboard this nice and easy cruise along the bay. I don't think I could have asked for a better way to cap my days in Tokyo. Even from these waters, I can still feel the energy of Tokyo. From its incandescent lights throughout the city and its offerings, to the countless action-packed activities, pieced together by its colorful citizens. Tokyo is indeed the place to be for whichever spirit that yearns to feel alive. Next week on Welcome to the Rail World Japan. This is known as Hellhole. It gets really cold, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs>